how do you figure out who to trust in your life? You're Joe Rogan. A lot of people want to be close to you, CIA agents, FSB agents, <laughs> uh, uh, people that want- I'm friends with a former CIA agent, yeah. Mike Baker, who's been on my podcast a bunch of times. Allegedly former. Former. Think about that. He's air quotes, former. Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe he's former. He's probably, I'm sure he has some connection to him. I also believe he's a good guy. But I gain a lot of very intelligent and well-informed insights from him as to how things work. And, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't tell me everything about everything, but he's told me enough where I, I, I think I can understand things better from talking to him about how the way, you know, the elves work under the machine. What, what about friends? How do you know if you can trust? Well, most like, of my friends are old friends. Time. I mean, so time is the thing. Yeah. Like uh, just going through shit together. Yeah. And also people shit. that, you know, first of all, comics. Like com uh, You can trust comics? If yeah. That, is that comics that are pretty trustworthy. The good ones, the really good ones. Yeah. There's not that many of us. If there's a thousand professional comics on earth, I'd be stunned. I'd be stunned. I don't even think there's a thousand. Like real professionals who you get booked all the time, headline weekends at clubs and theaters and arenas. Yeah. And then there's levels to that, right? There's like the guys who are middle acts who kind of like barely scrape by. And then like how many headliners are there? How many like really funny headliners that I would say, you know, if you, Lex, you tell me you're going to be in Cincinnati. Hey, this person's playing at this club. Should I go see them? Mm -hmm. I'd be like, ah. you know, like how many people would I give the, the recommendation to? And then how many people sell out theaters? How many people sell out arenas? How many people? There's not that fucking many. So those people, the, like at the uh, the levels of comedy where you do, you know, you've been doing stand up for 20 years, you, there's a certain amount of honesty and a certain amount of understanding of each other that we all have. Oh, so that that process of becoming a great comic is like humbling in the way like yeah. jujitsu is humbling. Very similar. Like there's you've take you've eaten so much shit that yeah. That that somehow, even if you're insane, if you even if you're chaotic, even in the way, even if you're full of shit, you lie a lot. All those kinds of things, underneath it, there's a good human. Yeah, you could be surface bullshitter, but on important things, you're trustworthy. Hopefully, I mean, if you're not, then people shy away from you. And there are people like that too that are really successful, but that are that are what I call islands. Um, I've I talked to other comics about that. Like, you don't want to be an island. Because there's these people that aren't attached to the rest of the community, yeah. and they're doing well on their own. And usually, they have like one opening act they bring with them on the road. They've worked with forever, and they don't have comedy friends. And they're, those people are miserable because well, some, they can't relate. Sometimes fame in itself is isolating. Very. So you have to actually do a lot of work and make sure you don't. It doesn't isolate you. Because yes. if you become successful people start wanting stuff from you. Yes. And then sometimes you want to push them away because of that, as uh -huh. opposed to uh, connect with them. Yeah, I don't enjoy it when people want things from me. <laughs> it's not fun. You just ignore it? Yeah, it's fucking too heavy. They want too much. And it's it's too much of a, a disproportionate relationship. You know, it's too unbalanced. Because uh, there are people where you could tell that they're working towards something. They're working towards an angle. Yeah. And they want to be close to you because you will you will benefit them. And then there's other people that are just, there's not that many of us. And so we all want to hang out together. Like when I, one of the podcasts I love the most is this podcast I do called Protect Our Parks. Mm -hmm. It's a thing I do with uh, Ari Shafir, Shane Gillis, and Mark Norman. That's yeah, great. It's so fun because we just get obliterated and we talk so much shit. Yeah. Like there's conversations after that podcast where I go, "Hey man, we got to cut that part out." Yeah. <laughs> because like Shane will go too far, will go too crazy, but we're just making each other laugh and it's just fun. And it's like that kind of camaraderie between real comics is very precious to me. My favorite part of that is like the non sequitur stuff from Mark Norman. <laughs> and you guys get so trash that you don't even understand what the hell he's talking about. But it's funny to the listener because he's still on point. That yeah. guy's as sharp. He's, he's so got good. That Mitch Hedberg quality. Yes. Wit. Well, he's such a such a dedicated comic. You know, he loves comedy so much. Yeah. That's one of the things I love about him. He's like comedy. He gets excited. <laughs> like he loves it. Yeah. As does Shane, and as does Ari. Yeah. You know, they really love it, and it's um, 
that's so so there's that like i have friends in that way and i have martial arts friends who are some of the uh also the thing about being humbled how things like jujitsu will humble you martial arts friends are they're also i they know they know who's been through it you know they know who's who really has gone through the gauntlet and emerged on the other end uh, a, a better person 